טוב, ברוכים הבאים, Welcome everyone to our session today, now on Judaism and political thought. We have three very inspiring speakers. They're all members of my department, so I know. Uh, our first speaker is Professor Nachshon Perez, and as I said, he's a member of the political studies department at Bar Ilan University. He's published many articles on various problems of toleration and pluralism. and on issues of the methodology of political theory. He's the author of four books. His second book, Women of the Wall, Navigating Religion in Sacred Sites, co-authored with Yuval Jobani, was published by Oxford University Press in 2017 and won the Best Book Award from the Israel Political Science Association. His fourth book, which is going to be published by Oxford University Press in early 2023, is Worldly Politics and Divine Institutions, Contemporary Entanglements of Faith and Government, So I'm going to talk a little bit about his social communitarianism, then enter the covenant, which is a central um, concept at um, his uh, thought, then the distinction between a covenant and a contract, which is central to his ideas, two kinds of covenants, one social and one political, and um, a little bit about, about the social covenants, the vol voluntary community, social functions in civil society, Then the challenge of political covenant, which is much more complicated um, given societal um, fragmentation. And then uh, I'll ask, um, can political covenant survive deep diversity? And we'll see if we'll have an answer. And then I'll uh, present some concluding remarks. So why should we think uh, about Lord Zaks, uh, Lord Rebbe Zaks as a political thinker? Well, he, he dedicated much thought to political and social issues, but his views are not usually concerned with immediate political disputes. They are not aligned with a particular political party. He's, he focuses on, on two issues, the importance of social communi communitarianism and the importance of the idea of a covenant. As such, his political thinking is preoccupied with major issues of contemporary politics, not with immediate um, political events. So it's not that kind of politics. Okay, so he... Um, his, um, get going point, right, is the um, uh, importance of demonstrating via various disciplines, social sciences, he cites a lot of social sciences research, the importance of human connection and the perils of loneliness, the de so the problems of hyper-individualism. The, the danger that worries him is the decline of any human partnership that requires a long um, a time, a long time investment and a measure of sacrifice. Um, as this will simply cease to exist. I'm, I'm going to quote him a lot, because it's not trivial to attribute to a, uh, to a rabbi the idea of analyzing him as a political thought, so I'm going to quote him quite a bit to make sure that I'm attributing to him his own opinions rather than my interpretation. So, a marriage in which one or both partners act selfishly is unlikely to last. A parent indifferent to the needs of his or her child will damage the child. A community in which the members are not willing to bear their share of the burden of keeping it going, a group of free riders will cease to exist, a nation without a sense of collective identity and responsibility will split apart. Now, the, political, the social and political background that created the social structures that interest Lord Zaks are gone, right, there in the past, and Lord Zaks understands this very, very well, and he writes, sociologists describe it as the move from Gemeinschaft to Gesellschaft, from the face-to-face -face relationships that pre predominate in small communities to the anonymous encounters of strangers that make up much of city life. So he does not look back with um, unnecessary sen sentimentalism, but he asks how such social structures can be maintained and in what shape and manner. And in a brief and kind of important comment, he rules out the social-wide imposition of religious values via the usage of the force of the law in Western societies. He writes, a Catholic may believe that abortion is murder, a Jew or a Muslim that sex outside marriage is forbidden, and these convictions are given life within our respective communities of faith. But we cannot seek to have them imposed by force of law on those who are not members of our community. If there are other groups who seriously disagree and make a compelling case for the right to construct a life along different lines. So he, 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 he rules out an imposition of religious values and conduct via the force of the law, but he does not rule out other policies of collective identity, including of religious sources and connotations. However, given that viable communality is a highly valuable human interest, the building, maintaining, and funding of meaningful communities becomes a mission of individuals in the civil society, not so much that of the state. I'll return to that point. Entering the covenant, which is kind of the solution. 
So a covenant is neither an alliance or in, no, of interest, nor, strictly speaking, an emotional state. Instead, it is a bond of identity. As if to say, this is a part of who I am, and it continues, a covenant binds in difficult times. This is because a covenant is not predicated on interest, but instead on loyalty, fidelity, holding together even when things seem to be driving you apart. I mean, he writes beautifully, so... And finally, a covenant is, is maintained by an, an internalized sense of uh, solidarity, kinship, loyalty, obligation, responsibility, and reciprocity. And a covenant cannot be taken for granted and must be nurtured by ritual and collective ceremony. This is all from the, um, from the politics of hope. So, covenant versus contract. So, Lord is careful to claim that the covenant is different than a contract. A contract, according to him, is two or more individuals, each pursuing their own interest, come together to make an exchange for mutual benefit. That's a contract. So there are commercial contracts that create the market, and the social contract that creates the state. Lord Zaks attempts to create a sharp distinction between a covenant and a contract. Covenant is an outcome of a bond of identity, and arises out of loyalty to a partnership or a community, while a contract is a formal advancement of interest. So these are two very different concepts. So there are two kinds of governance. This is a little bit of my interpretation, but I think it can be grounded in the explicit writings of Lord Zaks. So the social covenant is easier to understand. It's a social phenomenon. It's very similar, if not identical, to a, to a regular structure of a society in any Western society. Very similar, if not identical, to freedom of association, in that there are present families, communities, religious associations, and so on. What is different is that in Lord Zaks' vision, or a covenant idea, the motivation for each individual participating in these fields of conduct is Zach's bond of identity. This motivational factor, according to Lord Zach's, would strengthen the stability and vitality of such partnerships and associations, curing the social ills that he identified and we mentioned before. The political covenant is different, as it means a bond of identity shared by all citizens of the country and nurtured by the government. So these are completely two different things. So given that viable communality is a highly valuable human interest, the building, maintaining, and funding of communities, religious but not only, becomes an important mission of individual and the civil society. This is a localized mission, not that of the state, given the fragmentation of modern democracies. Zach's view of a social covenant fits well with the liberal view of a society as it does not introduce change in the formal legal structure of a liberal society. Individuals are free to join, create, maintain associations and groups, and to exit them. And while the motivation Zach indicates is a covenant-based communitarianism, it is not based on acts of the government. It, is, it depends on the approach, motivation, and decision of each different individual. Lord Zach connects the importance of covenant-based partnership and organizations to the well-known argument by scholars of civil society. The most famous one is um, the Tocqueville, that um, Zach cites quite often, and that such association and organization are necessary for the functioning of a stable democracy, as they create habits of the heart in which individuals learn how to self-govern themselves in establishing, managing, and funding such associations, and in creating important associations in between the government and the individuals, preventing a situation in which individuals are faced with the government with no intermediate organizations. So he writes, again, beautifully, a free society requires virtues, or what Tocqueville himself termed habits of the heart. Note that these exist in a, vac in a vacuum. They are born and sustained institutions. The family, the congregation, the neighborhood, the voluntary association, which give shape to our individuality and moral substance, to our sociability. Interestingly, Lord Zacks seems to classify religion in this category of partnerships standing separated from the government. Religion in America, he writes, was regarded as one of the main guardians of freedom. Far from being weakened by the separation of church and state, religion was threatened by it. The political covenant is much more complex. So it means a bonds of identity shared by all the citizens of the country and nurtured by the government. This kind of a political covenant encounters the immediate challenge or problem of the breakdown of religious, ethical, ideological, and ethnic homogeneity in any Western society, and other societies of sufficient size. We live in an era of political polarization, a strong ideological differences, not in an era of social cohesiveness. Lord Sachs understands very well this empirical observation. As he writes, we can no longer build national identity on religion or ethnicity or culture. 
But he still insists that a covenant-based politics is possible as rights. Covenantal politics is about we the people, bound by a sense of shared belonging and collective responsibility. So the question is, can political covenants, right? remember the distinction between political and social covenants, survive deep diversity? And Lozax has a nuanced view on this, so he writes as follows. Nations are enriched by diversity, and integrated diversity coexists with a shared national identity. By being what we uniquely are, we contribute to society what only we can give. That is a way of being Christian, or Hindu, or Muslim, or Jewish, while being proud to be English. Without patriotism, a cohesive sense of belonging and identity is impossible. But patriotism belongs to civil society, to the moral community whose shared values we live by as citizens. If there is no such thing as a national moral community, if civil society atrophies and dies, while all that is left are the competitive arenas of the market and the state, then liberal democracy is in danger. So is there a political institutional translation Almost done. To Zach's covenant ideas. So Zach's right. It needs communities where individuals can feel that their values are protected and can be handed on to their children. And it needs an overarching sense of national community in which different groups are participants in a shared pursuit of the common good. This is from the Reed Lectures. Uh, this view seems to sit well with what we describe above as two different kinds of covenants a localized one which is still dependent on fixed shared values. The second is rooted in acknowledging the importance of a shared statist framework. And he writes, a community of communities needs two kinds of religious strength, one to preserve our own distinct uh, traditions, the other to bring them to an enlarged sense of the common good. So what kind of political arrangement or constitutional design can serve this vision? For the local social covenant, there are two options. They're quite simple. The first is to leave the building, man maintaining, and funding of such communities to the initiative of each individual. Uh, a second option is that the government will take an active role in establishing, maintaining, and funding of such associations in an even-handed or non-preferentialist -prefer non manner, similar to the way England funds faith schools. In the political institution, that's much more complicated. So, for the political, overarching political covenant, there are, again, two options. One is mere constitutional principles, similar to Habermas' constitutional patriotism. This is an option that Zacks, as best as I can understand him, rejects. And the second option is substantive covenant, the result of a conversation among different groups in a given society. This can be a federalist or unitary framework, and here Zacks has a conversation with Daniel Lazar. This option faces the problem of the diversity of current populations of large democratic countries. Here, a covenant can become a mere majoritarian regime, disconnected from Zach's bonds of identity that are required for a covenant-based society. So a shared communitarian political identity might collide with the idea of a covenant. Concluding remarks. So Lord Zach advocates social communitarianism, similar to Michael Watts, Michael Sandel, and others. He also advocates the idea of a covenant, a connection made via bonds of identity. Um, Daniela Lazar, um, conceptualize that as a consent-based kinship. Right? As long as communitarian ideas that are covenant-based are localized, his thought is, is convincing and important. Once it becomes statist or political, it encounters the difficulty of the deep diversity of contemporary societies. At that point, shared identity is no longer to be found, and the consent-based covenant is hard to establish. While there are certain institutional arrangements that can overcome this problem of deep diversity in the context of a covenant-based society that is also communitarian, such as Elazar's federalist suggestion, it is uh, arguably in the spirit of Zach's insistence on the consent aspect of the idea of a covenant to keep the communitarian aspect localized while maintaining a thin shared status framework. Thank you very much. <laughs>